In this second section of the Riding Tickets webinar series, we'll walk through building a basic ticket all the way through to invoice, starting with an estimate, updating to an RO, ordering and receiving parts, and completing the invoice process. Now, this is the recommended workflow in Manage Online, so that's what we'll demonstrate today. So let's build a break job on this ticket. I'll cover custom jobs a little later as they can really speed up your ticket writing process. Right now, let's build this break job by going into our electronic catalog. Now from my options here, both labor times and catalogs will take me to the same view. Since labor times is closest to the top, then I generally prefer to select that. This defaults to our OEM catalog to get my labor times first. And with your vendors set up and catalogs linked, you'll see those additional options across the top here to get corresponding parts. Since we're on the OEM catalog, then we'll start there. We have several ways to look up our labor times here. Now you can choose from the pick list on the left hand side over here, or we can choose the search feature and just type in what we're looking for. I'm looking for brake pads. I can just type in brake pads or even the word brake, which will return more options to choose from. I'll select brake pads from the results and scroll down to find the labor times for my front brake pad job. Since my tech informed me that we also need to do the rotors too, I'll add labor times for the rotors. Since this vehicle's OEM shows the rotor times for each side, I'll actually select that twice to cover my tech's time. This is added to my cart, which I can review prior to sending to my work document. But before I do that, I want to add brake pads and rotors from any of the catalogs shown here. And today, I'm going to choose my AutoZone catalog, because AutoZone's catalog has an extra feature that I want to show you. So I can still search for my parts from the pick list here, or keyword search just like we did earlier. But what I want to point out is down here under our basket linked parts category, I see brake pads. So let's select that. AutoZone's catalog opens to display all available brake pads and current prices for me to choose from. I'll click through my selections to find the brake pads I want for this job. Now this one seems like a good choice. I could also add multiple quality options to share with my customer to help them make an informed choice, but I'm just gonna choose this one today. Additionally, the related categories area up here also includes my rotors, which I'll select next and then add both rotors to my cart. Okay, I'm ready to add these items from my cart to my document by clicking Add to Document. That takes me automatically back to my work screen from my next steps. Now, before I move on, Manage Online will always allow you to make modifications to any of these line items by just selecting the code here, and you can edit times, quantity, prices, things like that. At this stage, what we have is just a work screen, and we need to save our work to either an estimate or a repair order, whatever your workflow dictates at this stage. Now, for our example, we're going to choose an estimate. This is really a best practice, especially if you want to save your work to present to a customer prior to authorization and begin the actual work. Now, when I select estimate, repair order, or invoice, you'll see the print preview pop up. As you see here, my estimate shows the estimate number, which is helpful for tracking, all my company information, my logo, which I uploaded during my setup, and all the details of the actual estimate. And you have the options to print or you can email this document directly to the customer. With the customer's go ahead for this job, I can create a repair order to send to my tech in the bay. So I'll choose create RO, which now turns this job into a repair order with its own reference number. And notice, that my repair order also references the estimate I'd created, so I can always find the previous document. Now I've put some parts on my ticket, but I do still need to actually order those. So my next step is to select order receive. This brings up my order receive window, and I'm gonna select from the far right all the parts for a given vendor that I wanna order. Now when electronically ordering, you'll need to select inquiry, to confirm the availability of those parts from the actual location. With that confirmed, I click order. Now here's a good place to enter any notes that might be helpful to the uh, vendor or the driver dropping off your parts. Now the order options here defaults to online as I'm ordering electronically, but email and print are also options if you're ordering manually from a vendor. 
and this brings up the detailed view of our purchase order. You can choose to print this if you like, but this looks good. So we'll close out of that and head back to our work screen where you'll see these yellow check marks indicating that parts were ordered but not yet received. And we'll see those turn green later. We mentioned our status codes earlier. Now's a good time to visit that real quick. Since I'm waiting on parts, I'm going to change my status for this RO to reflect that. Again, this is very helpful when I'm using my whipboard, for example. And in my whipboard, I could just drag the job over and the status would update automatically. Since I'm waiting on these parts, I've got other work to do. So let's make sure we update our RO to save any changes. And I'll clear all to begin a new ticket or perform some other work. Now, as my day continues and these parts arrive, I need to find that RO and actually receive in the parts to record in my system. Now, we can find that RO either from the recent documents section up here. We could go to the whipboard if I'm using that. Or we could just go to shop documents and repair order search. By default, this brings up a list of all of my open repair orders. And as you can see, I can view the status of all my open ROs in this view. And here's the one we're waiting on parts for. Let's select that. And it opens onto my work screen. Since we want to record the parts coming into my shop, we'll go back to order receive. Select the items that I'm receiving in. And an important step here is to make sure that you enter in your purchase invoice number. Now this is your vendor's invoice number and obviously will allow you to track and report on the parts spending from that vendor. So I'll click on receive and Manage Online generates a purchase invoice which tracks the spending. Now make sure to select the invoice button down the bottom here before you close this out to ensure the system records this. Now this is the confirmation we need to see and I'll click OK and move on. You can see that the parts are now received here and also when we move back to the work screen that previously yellow check mark is now green to indicate those parts have been received. Now we might also choose to change our status here to reflect that work is now being performed on the vehicle. And as always, don't forget to hit update to save your work. In our example here, our technician informs us that they discovered a brake fluid leak and recommends replacing the brake hose. So I'm gonna jump up here to my work description area and I can edit that existing work description to include the brake hose replacement. and I'll add that back to my document. So now I need to add to my repair order a brake hose and some brake fluid. Since these items are part of my brake job grouping, I'm not going to use the add job button. I'm actually going to use the add items icon, which is this plus icon here. If I had brake hoses in my inventory, then I'm gonna select parts, and I would search by part number or description, and I'd choose my parts to view the results. But since what I'm gonna do in my example here is order this hose over the phone from my vendor Bob's auto parts, then I'm gonna click add and enter that manually. So in this dialog box, I need to enter in my line code for this part. I created this in my setup. So I'm just gonna use BRK. Part code is the part number, Enter in the description, my cost, uh, my sell price. Now, if I have parts markup set, I'm gonna see this apply to my sell price here. Let's choose the sales class you created for default part sales. And I definitely need to select the vendor I'm ordering this part from, so let's choose Bob's. Now, if this is a part that you plan on having on stock, mark that here. Marking this as a quick part We'll also add this to a quick list of the most common parts you use daily. And lastly, if this was a fluid, you'd mark it as such instead. Now let's click add to put this into our current parts for our ticket and click done. Now one more item to add to this job grouping is my brake fluid, which I have listed in my quick parts list. I'll add the brake fluid to my current job grouping again by clicking on the add item icon right here. Select quick parts. This will bring up my quick parts and fluids list 
As you see here, I can select to view my quick parts or select fluids to see my fluids. Now these items became part of my list because we previously chose to select them as quick parts or fluids when adding them to my inventory. Select the break fluid. I can change the quantity if needed and click on done. Now we see the break fluid on our ticket. I'll click on the add item icon one more time because I want to add the labor to my current job grouping. To add a labor for the break hose, I have a choice to access the labor times catalog or I can choose labor to manually add my own labor to the ticket. Let's select labor. This shows me my quick labor screen. Here we see the list of my current labor rates. The one we see highlighted in blue is the default labor rate we selected for our customer. I'll click on the pencil next to the labor that I want to use. This will move the labor information to the middle of the screen to allow me to make changes. I'll edit the description to show replace break hose. I can change if needed the cost, the hours, hourly rate and the technician. I then click add to show the labor below. Now notice that the labor shows tech associated to the break hose, but no techs were selected for the other labors. Now does that mean that no tech will get credit for the labors? Not necessarily. If I selected a technician at the ticket level like we did earlier, that technician will get credit for those labors left blank. Okay, I'll click on done to add the labor to my ticket. Now the next step on this ticket would be to go into order receive function and place the order for that break hose we just added. I'm not going to do that right now. The steps for doing that are pretty much the same that we demonstrated earlier. But let's just say our technician also recommended replacing the starter and our customer agrees to that recommendation. If we needed to add another separate job to this ticket, what you'll see here then is two job groupings. Now this time, we'll do that via a global custom job. Now since we're adding this as a separate job grouping, I'm going to go back to my Add Job button here and select Jobs. Now Manage Online comes pre-populated with several custom jobs which you may choose to use as a quick way to add common services to your tickets. This opens my custom jobs list. And as you can see, many of the global custom jobs are categorized. For example, brakes, electrical and battery, even special promotions. Now you can certainly build your own custom jobs and place them into these categories for easy selection. For our example today, let's add a starter replacement global custom job, which is here under electrical and battery. So I'll select that. Now our global custom jobs are also automatically connected to the AutoZone catalog. When you build your own, you can connect to any of our fully integrated catalogs, which include NextPart, AutoZone, Transtar and ATD for tires. Here's our pick list and we'll go to the OEM catalog first since it's the top of our pick list and we'll go to the OEM labor times for our starter job. We'll add that to our cart as we did earlier. Then moving down my pick list, I'm going to select starter here from AutoZone. This one's available so I'll add that to my cart also. And I'll select Add to Document to put that entire job grouping on my work ticket. And on my work screen, now you can see I have two separate job groupings, a break job grouping and a starter grouping. And as we showed earlier, you can add individual parts or labor lines within each of these job groupings. The last thing I want to point out here before we invoice this repair order is the supplies and hazmat fees here. Now we discussed setting these up during our setup webinar, but just to demonstrate that if I select each of these, you can see the details of these charges that reflect my setup choices. And these can be edited or zeroed out from this individual work screen if you need to. Now continuing with our scenario here, we just got word from our tech that both services have been completed. So I'm going to change my status to completed and update my repair order. Now it's time to contact our customer and while I could pick up the phone and try to get hold of them, it's much quicker for me to simply send them a text directly from my work screen. 
I'll select the cell phone icon up here. Now this brings up my text message fields. If I've preset my text messages, then this will populate the message I select automatically. Otherwise, you can just free type in the message whatever you want to send. I'm going to select my vehicle is ready message and one click sends that to my customer's phone. Now one thing we recommend as a best practice here is to include your shop's phone number or your cell phone in the message. That way your customer's phone will be able to reply directly back to your shop easily. Now with that done, I'm ready to invoice this repair order when the customer comes into my shop to complete payment for the services. Now we recommend always updating the RO prior to invoicing just in case you got distracted and forgot. This will save anything that we edited or changed on our RO earlier. After that, I'll select invoice. And this brings up my invoice confirmation screen. I'm not going to cover every field here, but I do need to confirm the mileage in and out. That's required at invoice time. One field we do recommend as best practice is to capture a media code for our customer. Now this will really help you define how your customers are finding you and what's working and what's not for your shop's marketing. Now you could have captured this from the estimate or repair order when the customer came in by clicking on the options button. But if you forgot, this is a quick way to capture it before the customer leaves. Now notice the pay and pay later option here. Pay later could be used for a fleet customer, for example, who won't be paying at the time of pickup, and this allows me to carry the balance and collect payment later. More commonly though, Mr. Williams will want to pay now, so we'll choose the payment method, and then choose pay to accept payment and invoice the ticket. I can email this invoice if it's convenient for my customer, or print it out if they'd prefer. Now that we've invoiced the repair order, we can view some additional reporting benefits. So if I go to reports and analysis reports, we can see the profit tracker report. And we could also find the business analysis report very helpful. Now these are only viewable when we process invoices. And from my invoice you can also see I've got my repair order number hyperlinked so I can reference those at any time. Additionally, if we've enabled the My Carfax features we discussed during our setup class, then invoicing will continue to share that service history between Carfax and Manage Online. Okay, well that's the basics of writing a work ticket. There are other features that we'll cover in future webinars, but for now, as a reminder, remember this help icon up here, which contains really helpful in-product step-by-step procedures for a whole lot of functions in Manage Online. And you can also reach out to our training team for live help by selecting the Contact Us option here and giving us a call. Thanks very much.